Uh, John in Enfield, let's get your straight to walk off your call. 7.49 is the time. Your reaction to the, Ru- the Rwandan idea and indeed the church's criticism. Good morning. Oh, hello, Nick. Yeah, nice to speak to you. Just a quick hello, diversion. Sir. You know that uh, uh, Arab uh, spy weather they're using? It's called, uh, it's called Pegasus, yeah? Yeah. And they, they bought that from the Israelis, yeah? Right. Uh, you know MBS, you know, the leader of uh, Saudi Arabia? Right. Yeah? Uh, He's got yes. a three, 300 million pound yacht. And you know what it's called? Uh, I'm. I think I'm ahead of you. It's going to be Pegasus, right? It's called Pegasus. <laughs> right. Okay. So round the world goes. Such intrigue everywhere you look. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, thank oh, yeah. you for pointing that out. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. J- j- just going back to this issue, I've, I've spoke to you about uh, about it before. Um, there's there's thoughts on both sides, basically. If you sp- speak to the French people, they'll say, "Oh, it's the British. They they make it so easy for the people to come and get employment." And we go back to the black market scenario, you know, where you know it, it's back to this ID card system where they can just disappear and get, and get jobs. So that's partly our fault. But I don't know if you remember. Uh, do you remember Salvini, the ex uh, Italian minister? I think he's, yes. he's, he's class of the right wing. He, he yeah. actually turned he turned the uh, boats away a boat away a couple of years ago. Right. He was derided for that, and eventually uh, the, the boat w- w- boarded, okay. and I don't know, a couple of hundred people ended up, you know, uh, in, in, in Schengen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the issue is Schengen, uh, because of human rights, they can't turn these boats back. Right. So in effect, I, once they come, you, yeah. you've got more or less professional um, uh, people traffickers who will, will actually take people in the four corners of Schengen to bring them to, to Calais. Uh, some, some, some of those people will be there less than a day. Yeah. Let, let me ask you, because I've, I've got to move on, just broadly then, the Rwanda plan, as I'm calling it, you support it or not? Well, it's something, but um, I'll go back to this thing. What we should do for the money we're spending... Uh, it's, it's not our it's not our issue. It's the EU that should be uh, manning their borders. Turn back all their trawlers. Right, stop them fishing in our waters and tell them to sort sort their borders out. Okay, a fairly robust defence, John. Thank you for that. It's a view, as we say. You have yourself a safe day. Let's come to other matters. Nine minutes before eight is the time. Let's bring in the conversation on indeed the Rwanda plan and other issues. Conservative MP and Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, Brandon Lewis, who joins me now. Uh, I read that we are going to hear from the Prime Minister today, uh, later from the boss, uh, your boss later today, to get a sense of perspective about Party Gate. Can you give us any more of an indication, Secretary of State, what we might hear? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nick. Uh, yes, look, the Prime Minister will um, make a statement to Parliament this afternoon, uh, sometime in the mid-afternoon today, depending on parliamentary timetables. Um, I haven't seen the, the statement, so I don't know the specifics of what he'll say, but uh, I do know he will address the issue, as he said he would, uh, to Parliament around the fine from the police as well. Uh, uh, but this idea of a degree of perspective, can you give us anything more on that, Secretary of State? Uh, no, but I think, as the Prime Minister outlined uh, in his own statement uh, just last week, that he accepts the fine from uh, the police. He outlined the context of what was happening that day, um, where he was a, a very, as, as always for a Prime Minister, a very, very busy working day. Um, but he accepts the decision the police have come to pay the fine and has apologised for that. And do we know whether he's likely to feature in any more of these parties or indeed be in receipt of any more fixed penalty I, notices? I have, n- I, I have no knowledge of that whatsoever. As I say, as I've said all along, we've got to let the uh, police do their investigations. Uh, the Prime Minister has been very clear he will uh, go public with anything that, aff- that involves him, as he has done in, in this case as well. And then obviously the Sue Gray report will uh, finalise after that's all concluded. Are the st- Conservatives still a happy band behind their leader? Well, my experience is my colleagues are always happy. Um, We are focused on working for people across the UK and delivering for our constituents. And I have to say, when I've been talking to colleagues who are working both on local elections and in areas like mine that don't have elections this year, uh, that's where people's focus rightly is and and always has been. Okay, But were he to be involved, uh, can I put to you, how many parties would be too many parties or events or gatherings, whatever you want to call them? I think I've been on your show enough over the years, uh, Nick, that, you, you know, I'd, I've never been drawn into hypotheticals. I'm, I'm not really going to start on that now. But look, my focus has been and my support for the prime minister has been because he is somebody who as prime minister has consistently got well, these big calls right, that are that the right calls for our country, moving our country forward in a positive way. And that's why he'll continue to have my support. And just lastly on this, of course, you'll be aware it's a thousand and one days since the prime minister became the prime minister since Boris Johnson. What's his greatest achievement in those thousand and one days, in your view, Secretary of State? 
Yes, well, it's, it's quite. A, I am aware because I was chairman of running the leadership campaign that that he won to become leader back in uh, 2019. Look, I think it's actually quite a tough, quite a serious way because this is a prime minister who who delivered Brexit after four years uh, of Parliament being in a uh, complete um, logjam and not getting anything done for the country and not delivering Brexit. He got that done. He's made the big calls right. Um, through the COVID pandemic and getting out of the COVID pandemic. That means our economy has been growing beyond most of our uh, competitive nations and arguably uh, more than pretty much any. And even on something like Ukraine, he got the decisions right along with the Defence Secretary very, very early on and arguably before others uh, to give that support to Ukraine that they so badly needed and has made such a difference. So, you know, he consistently gets these decisions right. And I think... um, and I think we should be very proud of that as a country. Staying with the Prime Minister, can you give us an update, Secretary of State? You'll be aware of the story on the front page of a number of the newspapers. This Pegasus spyware, reportedly the Prime Minister being told his Downing Street offices had been targeted with suspected infections using Pegasus, this hacking software that turns a phone into a remote listening device, it is claimed. Got any more on that? Uh, look, no, I'm sure you'd appreciate it. I'm not going to be commenting on uh, security issues. Uh, uh, people have seen the reports on that. Any sort of uh, threat or risk to security of any part of government is one we take seriously. Um, and, has there been a threat or risk at, but, as a result but, of this but story? I'm, but I'm not going to be commenting on a security issue. But, but has there been a threat or risk at any point I'm through absolutely, this? I'm beyond, beyond the reports that people have seen, I'm not going to be making any comment on that today, I'm afraid, Nick. You mentioned that you were chair of the party. Of course, you were also immigration minister under Theresa May I prior was. to that. Interesting to get your take on the Rwanda plan, uh, as it's so-called, the Rwanda plan, not least in the light that it doesn't seem to be pleasing a lot of faith leaders. Secretary of State. Well, look, yeah, I mean, yes, I was immigration minister. This is a, a really difficult area. And what was always one of the most challenging things was how do you break the business model, this abhorrent business model that the people smugglers have? And again, this is an area where I think the Prime Minister and, and the Home Secretary have got this call right. I think this is a very, very good plan at a number of levels. One is it does start to break that business model um, and it starts to be much clearer to people that taking that treacherous journey and being um, conned into that by nefarious uh, criminals uh, isn't the right way to go and breaks that criminal model and the modern slavery that it leads to. But also a humanitarian side of these people therefore do have the opportunity then to uh, be in a safe place and Rwanda's got a very, very good track record over the last few years of working with people and migration. We in the UK can be very proud. We've got a very, very strong record, 185 5,000 people have come to the UK uh, through uh, refugee and asylum schemes over the last few years. Um, and I think at both humanitarian level and in a way that's right for the UK economy, this is a scheme that can, can work very well. I think it's innovative um, and I think it is a very, very positive step forward. When you were in post or when you were part of the team, did you ever consider what I understand is known as outsourcing? Uh, no, look, I have to say, when I, I, I did the job for about six months and a lot of our focus at that time was about removing foreign national offenders, which we got good track record of doing and we were doing the work across border force and with the military teams around starting to look at and this is the thing this has been a long time um, in process looking at how what what can, more can we do to break this business model I mean, this deal alone has been nine months um, work for the home secretary with with her colleagues out in Rwanda to get to the details of this but but it's been a long time the government's been looking at and it is such a complicated area how do you break this business model and work with a partner that you can rely on and trust to, to do this in the right way and I think with Rwanda we have found a a partner we can do that with. But if I am unscrupulous enough that I would traffic people, risk their lives, putting them out on flimsy craft with ill-functioning outboard motors, I don't care whether they're getting to Rwanda or Romford, do I? As long as I get my five, ten... 15,000 euros or whatever, I'll just push them out to see, won't I, Secretary of State? Well, <clears throat> from the from the people smugglers' point of view, I'm sure that will be their attitude. The reality, though, is that they sell this model to, the, to their victims on the basis of them being able to come to the UK. And that's why being able to be very clear, and one of the things that it's surprising how quickly things feed back uh, through the chain, being very clear with people that you will not be ending up in the UK. You will end up in Rwanda, which is much easier to get to um, in the first place. You don't need to take that treacherous um, uh, process and, and take that risk of life. So it does start to break down the business model because the victims, what they will see as their customers, but actually are victims, uh, will know that the, the, the process they're being sold is a full story in the first place. It just doesn't work. It isn't where they're going to end up. And therefore, the model starts to break down. But this is part of a wider package. We've got the Nationality and Borders Bill that's been going through. There is no silver bullet to deal with the challenges of um, the, this kind of abhorrent illegal trade. But putting it together as a wider package is how we deal with it. And this is a very important part part of that and a positive one as well. All right and lastly are you aware what is the percentage of staff in your particular office that are back behind their desks or 
working in their respective offices, Secretary of State? Well, in, in my department, slightly odd, because my department split 50% between London and Belfast. Um, and we do have office, uh, our staff back in the office, and we've actually just moved offices in Belfast, being the centre of Belfast, much more accessible than we've been before, which I'm really proud of doing. Um, and it's been great to have people back in the office. And you can see the staff themselves, the team, pleased to be back with each other. I think it's important to have people in the office, both from my commercial experience before I was, when I was running businesses before in Parliament, and as a minister and as a Secretary of State, I think at a number of levels. One is you need that human interaction. I think people benefit from that, particularly new people coming into an organisation and younger people yeah. learning from those with experience. I think it is important, and that's why we've been encouraging it. And certainly in my department, I've seen in Belfast, people are back in the office and enjoying but, being there. But what, where is your number? You'll have seen that the Times has a list. The International Trade Department, 73% of desks taken up, while Foreign Office, I'm afraid, is 31%. Where might the Northern Ireland office be in that? Uh, I think, well, if I take the Belfast side, because I say our offices mm. are, are, are split, and this is based on the London uh, London base, I think in Belfast it's high. Um, but as I say, but what's different high? departments will have different 50? needs. Well, I would, yeah, yeah, I would think it, I would expect it to be over 50%, but as I say, my staff are split, and this is based on London office base, and my my staff are working right. a different way. But, the, um, but, but they are back in the office, and we're seeing more and more people coming back in. And different departments will have different needs, and it's hard to comment on any particular department, particularly ones I'm not in, um, because they will have staff who are potentially working remotely because they're working around the country. Uh, but look, as I say, I, I support the work Jacob Rees-Mogg is doing to see more people back in the office, I think, is a good thing. Grateful for your time today. Thank you, Northern Ireland Secretary Brandon Lewis, appearing here on LBC, where at 8 o'clock the news is next. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, Ukraine says a Russian offensive to take control of the east of the country is underway. President Zelensky says a significant...